couple of technical difficulties, as is to be expected, I guess. Uh, coming to you from home office, so wasn't always sure about all of the technical stuff, but I hope I'm live now and I hope a few of you can already see me. Um, yeah, I'm in home office, as I said. Uh, the current situation uh, is meaning that a lot of us are stuck at home right now, but that's a great opportunity for me to get to meet some of you guys virtually. Um, wish I could see you as well. It's a bit weird talking to myself. It's not quite as fun as a Zoom meeting or something. But um, anyway, hello from Cologne, Germany. Um, uh, for any of those of you who don't know Meet the Germans very well, maybe you've just stumbled across this live stream, hello. My name is Rachel and I present DW's Meet the Germans video series. Um, it's basically just a sort of deep dive into German culture, but from an outsider's perspective. So I'm from the UK um, and it's a little bit of a funny series, but also we try and give you lots of information about German daily life, German culture, German traditions um, and habits from um, to, well, from all over all over the country, really. Um, yeah, we've done thirty videos so far in this series. Um, the videos have been running for a few years now, and I've been in charge for about a year and a half hosting. And it's been like absolutely loads of fun. I love doing the videos, uh, going out talking to people, and getting the reactions from you guys as well is really really cool. Um, thanks so much for all the questions that you've been sending in for the last twenty four hours or so, or forty eight hours. We've got a lot. I've got, I think, about eight pages of questions that we could go through. I'm probably not going to get to all of them, I'm afraid, but that just means that we'll have to do this again sometime. So if you give me one moment, I'm just going to make sure I can see all of your live questions coming in. Um, feel free to post anything as we go along, uh, leave me comments and ask me anything you like. Just one second then. Okay, I should be able to see now if any of you post anything. I'm going to start off just quickly with a very brief um, introduction because lots of you have been asking um, where I come from, uh, exactly where I come from. You're trying to place my accent. Um, I know it's quite difficult because I'm from the UK and I don't have a very strong regional accent. So I grew up in Hereford, which is on the border between England and Wales. Um, and sometimes you might hear a tiny bit of a Welsh twang, but my mum says when I call her that I speak completely differently to her than I do on videos. Um, I don't know why that is. I think partly it's got to do with when you move to another country um, and you're speaking English, my native language, with people who aren't native English speakers, I probably just speak a bit differently. Um, and I think also, like a lot of people have a telephone voice, I've probably got a camera voice. Uh, so I should probably speak a bit more posh, uh, as a lot of my friends have told me on Meet the Germans, but that's fine. So we've got some uh, messages coming up. Hello to everybody. Can you tell me where you are if you say hello as well? Um, great to hear from you guys. We've got some people coming in from India. We've got, I think, somebody from Perth with a question mark. I don't know if they don't know where they are. <laughs> I've got family in Perth, so hello. Um, okay, so... Oh, got a good question there. First of all, how did you fall in love with your husband? Um, well, yeah, some of you might know I married a German last year. Um, I've been together with this guy for 10 years. We met on our Erasmus year. Um, so I studied French and Spanish at university, went on my Erasmus year, hoping to fall in love, have a romantic story, probably with a Frenchman, um, and came home with a German. So it wasn't planned, but um, that's just the way it goes, I guess. And um, as a lot of people say, the best way to learn a language is to get a partner from that country. It's true. I think that um, it makes it more of a natural language learning process. So you can be a bit slower with it. We started off on the phone, sometimes speaking a little bit of German. Um, and then slowly I got a bit more confidence to sort of talk to his family, talk to his friends. Um, took a lot of time, as I said, 10 years in the making. But um, yeah, I think that's... A good good way to do it. So we've got some people coming from Michigan, USA. Hello from Turkey. Oh, we love our Turkish viewers. We know that you guys follow closely as well on the DW Turkish channel. So thanks for joining. Um, Osnabrück, great. We've got some Germans here too. That's what we like. <laughs> and I will start off with a question from the comments. If we've got any more questions. Someone asking which other languages I speak. So as I briefly mentioned. Um, 
I studied French and Spanish, so technically I do have a degree in French and Spanish, but um, strangely enough, I actually feel more confident in German now. I think that's because um, it's just a completely different language learning process. So um, if you learn something, I think academically, I feel a bit more pressure with, German, uh, with French and Spanish that I should be able to speak it perfectly, uh, I should be able to know the grammar perfectly, Whereas with German, it was just a very much, it was organic. I, I learned it here, I learned it speaking with other Germans. Um, and I think that took some of the pressure out of it, so it kind of was more fun. Uh, nobody expected me to speak perfectly, so I could just have a go and everyone would be, everyone would be grateful for me trying and um, impressed if I got anything correct, so that's really nice. Uh, we actually had a question from somebody um, yesterday that came in on YouTube asking, do Germans mind if you get the grammar wrong? So if you say der, die or das for the wrong word? No, in my experience, they don't at all. I think that, um, I think Germans are quite picky with language with each other. So they'll, they'll be quick to correct one another if someone uses it um, in their own native German tongue. But if, if someone from somewhere else is trying to speak German and, and says the wrong article, it's not important at all. <laughs> I think they're just really impressed that someone's trying. So I tend to have a bit of a potluck approach. I'll just say whichever article I feel like saying at the time. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, I've got some grammar books behind me. I think that's more of a decoration than anything. I uh, very rarely have opened them uh, over the last 10 years, but it's on my, my bucket list, or it's on my to-do list anyway, to at some point try and get a little bit more stuck in with the grammar because um, that's something I think is more difficult to learn because at some point you've basically just got to get stuck into a book and work out what the actual rules are and that's not so much fun. Okay, let's have a look at the comments again. Thank you for the hugs from Mexico. <laughs> Very glad to see you. Okay, so we've got some questions coming in about um, the current situation, about what, how Germany is dealing with coronavirus. So yeah, let's just get stuck in with that quickly. I think it's been really interesting. We've all been comparing how different countries are dealing with um, the current crisis. And it's been interesting within one country to see as well. So in Germany, because a lot of rules are decided at state level, we've seen quite a difference between the different areas of the country with what's allowed, um, what's expected, and what's actually been put under new rules. Um, I think it started off Bavaria and Hesse. They, were, they had slightly stricter rules than most of the rest of the country. Um, here where I am in Nordrhein-Westfalen, in NRW, it has been, in, in comparison to some of the other states, a little bit um, more relaxed. I've noticed, I've seen pictures on Twitter and social media uh, from other places, including Berlin, where you might expect them to be a little bit more relaxed, um, you know, of police coming along and, and moving people when they've been sitting down in a park for too long or something. That's something, personally, I haven't actually seen in, in Cologne. Um, and something that's happening new this week is that they've said they're going to introduce compulsory masks. Um, we actually had a few of you guys writing to us asking why Germans aren't quicker to wear masks. So people were quite surprised because some of you guys come from countries where you would use, wear that quite normally. Um, it's not a big deal. Whereas here it does seem to be quite a cultural shift. Um, I have a mask because my, when my good friend of mine and my neighbour, she sewed me a mask uh, a couple of weeks ago for my birthday. That was a very nice novel 2020 birthday gift. Um, so I wore it to the supermarket for the first time yesterday and there were quite a few people wearing them and I think as of next Monday it's going to be compulsory in uh, all states for shopping at least and public transport. So yeah, that's kind of an update from me. I did a video last week um, about what's kind of changed in Germany because of the corona crisis so do check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed it the ones who've seen it. Um, there's been a few, you know, subtle cultural changes that have have happened because because of what's going on. So, um, someone's asking why Germany? Um, I think I covered that with um, because I fell in love with the German basically, but um, I'm glad to say there was also a professional reason. So, um, we had a long distance relationship for quite a long time. I was uh, working in London for a newspaper and finally the opportunity came up. Uh, DW has a really great traineeship program, an international traineeship, and I finally felt like I was at the stage where my German was good enough to apply for it. And um, I'm very happy to say I got it. So that was 2016, the end of 2016. Um, so yeah, I got trained up by DW in um, multimedia journalism and learned how to cut videos, which is how I then ended up making Meet the Germans. 
So um, yeah, that was a good step in my life, I'd say. And I'm very happy here. I, I really enjoy living in Germany. It's great. Okay, let's get some more questions here. Ooh, why Dusseldorf is, is better than Cologne? I, I can't tell you the answer to that because I don't agree with it. <laughs> I think Dusseldorf's a great city as well, but um, every city has its own character. I think re it's really nice in Germany that um, it's not as if everything is centered on one main city. Uh, I think coming from the UK, quite often you feel like everything's in London and everyone only ever talks about London. Um, especially if you meet people abroad, they'll always say they know people in London, but they don't know that much about the other cities. In Germany, it's really nice that the different cities have a really strong identity. Um, they also have different industries that are based in different cities. You know, you've got your business in Frankfurt, you've got a lot of the creative uh, startup scene in Berlin, as well as some of the politics, but then you've also got politics in Bonn um, and other international or central organisations. Um, you've got media spread out between Cologne and Hamburg and Mainz. So, yeah, that's really nice, actually. I think that's there's a different flair in every city, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> thanks for the birthday wishes, the belated birthday wishes. <laughs> Lots of people asking how old I am. I'm 31, so I've gone into the 30s now. It wasn't a Runde Geburtstag, uh, which is a, a round birthday, which is a, a time that deserves a special party. I actually, there was a, uh, there was the guy's name, I'm going to be able to find it now, but um, I think it was John, and I think it's his wife's name was Julia, and I think it's her birthday today. So if I've got your name correct, a happy birthday. Um, and you guys said that you were thinking of moving to Germany at some point. So good luck with that. Um, yeah, obviously now is probably a strange time to do that. But um, yeah, I think the process of moving from the UK to Germany is an interesting one because we're so close geographically and in many ways we're very close culturally. Um, but it's the everyday, day-to-day -day, tiny things that um, sometimes take a bit of getting used to, that are sometimes really surprising, but in my experience that makes things more exciting. Um, I wouldn't want to live uh, back in the UK now simply because I'm so used to the daily challenges of, of living somewhere, living abroad. Every day just going to the shops is an exciting challenge, you know, because maybe I'll, I'll see a word I've never seen before. Or maybe, I don't know, if you're trying to bake something, and you look at a recipe book that you got from back home, you go to the shops and you can't find the ingredient because it's just one of those things that um, either things are, have got a different name, they're stored in a different place, they don't even exist in Germany. I mean, take something like Quark, which is a, a dairy product in Germany, which I'd never heard of before. And it's quite a staple in a lot of um, baking and even just you can eat it raw. You don't get that in the UK. And it's, it, so I find it really surprising that there are things like that. Um, in countries that are so close to each other that um, are actually don't exist. So I'm going to show you something that has changed about me since I came here. So I now drink sparkling water, which I never would have thought to do before, um, but I think it's delicious now. Okay, so how long does it take to learn German for the average English speaker? That's uh, from Polaikan. That's a very difficult question, obviously. Um, I think you have to be really patient with learning any, lang any language. There are some benefits that if, um, if you're coming from English, then at least there are some common roots or um, common patterns from English to German. Um, you know, there's a lot of Germanic language as part of the English language. Um, I had a benefit that, as I said, I learned other languages before, so sometimes I think that makes it a little bit easier to then move on to the next language. Um, a lot of people have asked how long it's taken me, and a lot of you have been really complimentary at saying that I'm fluent in German. I wouldn't quite say I've got that far yet, and it's definitely not perfect, um, but thank you very much for your very kind comments. Um, I would say I've been learning on and off for the last maybe eight years or so. Um, I tried an evening course while I was at university, but it wasn't very good, <laughs> so I gave up on that. Um, I... I did have one year of German in school when I was 13 years old. Um, the only vocabulary I could remember from that was Ich habe ein Meerschweinchen, which means I have a guinea pig. Um, and we went on a German exchange to a city called Dillenburg, which is not too far from Cologne, actually. And um, the only vocabulary I learned there was Willst du mit mir gehen, which is how to ask somebody out. Um, as in how to ask them to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. So that was very useful language that I learned back then. Um, 
and then as I said mostly learning German was all about being here it was um, it's just a huge help to be confronted with the language every day so if I go outside I might be reading street signs I might be as I said in the supermarket trying to find an ingredient obviously I'll be talking with people all the time even getting a ticket on the bus you know you're constantly forced to practice your language so it just helps so much I remember when I first moved here um, I was quite scared of going to the supermarket because it just seemed like such a challenge and I, I was worried that someone was going to ask me a question at the checkout that I wouldn't understand. Um, but, you know, you keep putting yourself out there, you keep, um, you be patient, as I said, and um, yeah, people, people are generally quite kind here, I think, if you're, if you're trying your best to communicate with them in their own language. Okay, let's go for another question. Ah, someone's, ah yes, here we go, Ante, you asked the question about um, Dirty Das um, before, maybe you've just joined us, so I'll just repeat that one. Germans, do not mind if you use the wrong article, they'll be really grateful that you're, you're trying to speak their language. Um, and as I said, they're a bit more picky with each other because, um, yeah, they like their language to be spoken properly, um, but they're not going to be fussy at all. I mean, in my experience, Germans are extremely kind when I'm trying to speak German to them. Uh, people asking which city they should move to in Germany. Um, that kind of ties in with a few people have also asked recommendations about cities to visit. Um, I personally still don't think I've seen enough of Germany, so I'm not the, I don't have the most wisdom on this topic at all. Um, I personally really like Hamburg. I think it's a great city. Um, has a bit of a different feeling to it. It's got um, nice different quarters. So you've got like a more alternative quarter. You've got the industrial quarter, which is really nice. Obviously you've got the harbor. Um, I love Berlin. Uh, Berlin sometimes can be a bit of a love it or hate it city, I think, for a lot of people. Um, I love it. I think it's really lively. I think it's really unique. Uh, I've done a video on Berlin as well, so do check that out. Um, and somebody was asking actually about which city is closest to my heart. Very easily, that has to be Cologne. That's where I live right now. It's where I first experienced Germany. Um, and I think it's just... I think it's a great city, I think it's a great size, so you can cycle around everywhere quite easily, um, but there's enough going on, there's a lot, it's a big cultural scene, um, and it's quite alternative in many ways, so yeah, I really love that. I'm going to maybe go to some of the questions that we had sent in so that I don't forget them, because you guys were really good um, sending those in. There's a question from Eva, uh, which I think was on Twitter, which was, what has surprised you the most about Germany since you moved here? either in a good way or a bad way. Um, I think there's so many things, but something that stands out is something I've talked about quite a bit recently, um, digital reluctance. I was super surprised because I think the reputation of the Germans is that they are very practical. And I kind of thought that com coming along with that would be um, technology and acceptance of, of modern technology um, and kind of being... Um, at the forefront when it comes to those sort of things, and that's not always the case. I don't know whether I could say it's a good thing or a bad thing, because as someone who comes from somewhere else, I found it frustrating at times, because, you know, I want to be able to use my convenient apps or whatever that I'm used to, um, but at the same time, I understand the reasons behind it often. There's a lot of, um, a lot of worry about data privacy, and that's something that perhaps people like me don't think about enough, so maybe I'm throwing my data out there far too often, and I should think about it a little bit more often. So I think there's, I think there should be a balance struck. I think we need convenience, we need to stay up to date, but we also, um, yeah, shouldn't just be throwing data around and putting convenience above security. That's not necessarily a good thing. So thank you for that, Eva. Um, let's go for another question. Oh, I had a really good one from Karina who asked for the most funny situation in a bicultural marriage, in my bicultural marriage. Um, lots of things come up every day. Um, sometimes it's misunderstandings. Sometimes um, I find it really interesting how people always ask, if you have an argument, what language do you argue in? <laughs> um, I'd say, if, I'm, if I want to express my feelings in a strong way, I probably do fall back on English. 
but um, German can be great for expressing anger. People often give it, say it's got a bit of a reputation for being a bit harsh, so that can be used to very good effect if you're annoyed. <laughs> um, but a really good uh, funny situation that happened to us was actually at our marriage, so at our wedding in the UK. Um, we had a little garden party and a tradition, uh, so I should explain that most of, all of my family is from Scotland, um, so I had a lot of Scottish relatives there and they wanted to bring in a few traditional elements. And one tradition is that everybody stands in a circle um, and sings the song, I don't know if you guys know it, Loch Lomond. Um, and they sort of stand in a circle holding hands and go in and out and the, the pair, is it the partner, bride and groom, are in the middle. Um, anyway, so my Scottish cousins are trying to get herd all these people together, all the guests who are half German, half Scottish. Um, and trying to get everybody all together and get them to do this this singing and dancing. So the Germans are looking a bit uncertain, uh, but they you know they grab hands with their partner, and the music starts. And then suddenly a few of the Germans start nodding their heads, and then it gets to the chorus, and they all start singing because apparently Loch Lomond is also the same tune for the FC Köln, the Cologne football team um, theme song. So everybody was happy. <laughs> that was a nice good, nice crossovers of our of our cultures. Um, okay, oh, we've got a few people asking for recommendations, and we had a lot of that as well being asked over the last few days. Um, recommendations of all sorts of things, so people were asking, if you're learning German, what are good TV shows or films? Um, someone had said, actually, that Babylon Berlin they've been watching, which is really good. Um, I would say on Netflix, there's actually slowly becoming more options in German, as in original German um, products that are really good. Dark was really good on Netflix. Um, How to Sell Drugs Online Fast was really good, I thought, and just very different for a German production. Um, I also really enjoyed Cool Down uh, 56, I think it was, the first series, and 59 the second. Uh, I think that's also on Netflix. Um, they're all quite different shows, so there's something for everybody there. And I also would recommend you can even watch other shows with German subtitles. I don't recommend putting the German dubbing on because... No, <laughs> I just can't watch dub dubbed films. Um, but with German subtitles, for example, I watched um, House of Money, the Spanish series, but with German subtitles. So you're sort of picking up a little bit along the way, which is really good. Um, what other questions? Oh, and then also in terms of recommendations, people were asking about um, food. Quite a few of you asked about snacks. So I guess I'm glad that we've got something in common. I also like snacks. They're very important to me. Um, so I actually brought something to show you. I hope you guys can see. These are very peanutty crisps. I'm calling them crisps, even though some people argue and say that a crisp has to be made out of potato and this is made out of corn, whatever. I'm calling this a crisp, a British version of a crisp. Um, I think that the crisp aisle in Germany is something I've had a difficult relationship with because um, I find it very irritating that almost all crisps in Germany seem to be paprika, as well pepper flavour, um, you know, where's the salt and vinegar, where's the cheese and onion, I was, I was struggling at the beginning because I didn't have the variety of crisps that I liked, but then I discovered these peanut wonders, um, they don't look very attractive, but I promise they're very addictive, so that's a, my tip, that's my, my food tip, I, you might be able to tell I'm not very um, culinary, I don't have great talents when it comes to cooking or anything, um, but yeah, snacks, that's where it's at for me. So thanks for the very good question. Uh, let's see what else is coming in. Oh, favourite books. I don't know if you mean German books. Um, if you do, then I have to make an admission. I've only ever read one German book from beginning to end in my life, and it wasn't actually even an original German book. It was a an English book translated into German, and it was Bob der Streuner, which is Bob the street cat, or street cat named Bob, I think, in English, and it's about a cat. <laughs> um, my mum gave it to me for Christmas, translated into German, and actually I think it was really a good idea because it was quite a simple story, and I think perhaps because it was an English translated into German book, um, perhaps the language was a little bit easier, so I managed to get through it and I was very proud of myself. Um, I don't do enough reading in German and I need to do more of it. That's something I've got on my to-do list for 2020 because um, obviously that's a really good way to improve language and 
Speaking is great, but sometimes you can get into strange situations because you think you've understood a word, but um, you've got completely the wrong idea of actually how it's spelt, and therefore, um, yeah, might not work when you try and use it again. <laughs> Oh, this is a good question. So, Passport2 saying, we often use how are you as hello, <laughs> which is quite funny. It's very true. So, um, English speakers will quite often say, oh, how's it going? Or, um, how are you? Not actually meaning how are you and not really wanting you to respond particularly. They might just carry on walking because for them it was just a greeting. Um, yeah, the Germans take that quite literally. So, uh, if you ask them how they are, First of all, they'll probably be a bit surprised, and secondly, they will tell you. So you might find out that, um, you know, a few of their ailments, that they're not very well, that their child is sick, you know, lots of detail that you might not have been expecting, so watch out for that one. We did have that question as well, um, oh, forgive me, I've forgotten who it's from, but um, asking about German small talk. I did a video about German small talk quite a long time ago, I think it was be over a year now, um, and it's one of my favourite videos, actually, because it is something that was, that was very much my natural reaction. So it's something that I noticed again and again when I moved to Germany, that this, this level of conversation when you're just getting to know somebody was so different to how I was used to it in the UK. Um, but if you watch the video, you'll learn that there are tricks you can, you can pick up on how to do very good German small talk. Um, I think the difference is that it's very specific. Um, Germans will ask you lots of questions and they'll kind of expect quite specific answers. Uh, they like numbers, they like to ask you questions about things like sizes and square feet, how big is your house, um, how many people live in your hometown. Um, Germans are so surprised when I say that because they're like, how could you not have known that before? I did not know that, but now I know that there are approximately 60,000 people in my hometown Hereford because I googled it after I got asked it several times. Um, we actually had a, I had an email once from somebody in Argentina who had seen, I'd been on DW on, on the TV talking about the show, and she said, um, thanks so much for bringing up the, the numbers thing, because um, she'd had the same experience, she'd been, on, she'd, been on, she'd been to Germany a few times, and she went to a party and she was thinking, right, I'm good at this, I know what they're going to ask me. She'd researched how many people lived in Argentina, how many people lived in her hometown, um, got to the party and someone asked her how many cows there were in Argentina. So, it's not just me that's struggling with this. <laughs> As a non-German with a German partner, I like this country. Good, Utko, that's good. <laughs> but it doesn't stop you making jokes about Germans in Germany. I agree. I think, um, I think as long as it's all done in, with a bit of respect, it's fine. I obviously make videos where you could say I'm slightly taking the mickey out of Germany, but I don't really think that's a problem. I think people let me get away with it a little bit because they say it's British humour, and um, Germany Germans tend to love British humour. They love a bit of sarcasm, um, and they love wit. Um, so, no, I think it's good to, to laugh about the quirks of a country. I think that there's perhaps a fine line between stereotypes and prejudices and trying to put everybody into one box. And on the other side, exploring a culture and being honest about the fact that there are differences between our cultures, even in a globalised world, even between countries that are very close to each other, and celebrating that. I mean, I think it's, it makes everything so much more exciting that, um, that we can say, oh, there are differences in the culture, there are differences in the attitudes, in the traditions. Um, and for me, the most exciting thing about that is that it's got nothing to do with race or or ethnicity, it's all about uh, the culture right there and then. So I, um, I wasn't born in Germany, I'm not German, but the longer I stay here, the more I start to pick up very German cultural habits. And when I'm back home in the UK, people will say to me, oh, you're so German sometimes. And I think that's great. I think that I've adopted some, some aspects and I'm happy with that. <laughs> I think that's good. Okay, ooh. Okay, Indopreet's asking preferred mode of transportation in, Deutsch, in Deutschland, in Germany. Um, I'm going to say the bike, because I love the fact that almost everywhere here has cycle lanes. They're not always the most well-maintained, and Cologne can be a bit hazardous sometimes, there's cracks all over the pavements. 
but um, I found it a really big um, advantage here that the cyclist is kind of seen as, well, at least they, they behave as the king of the road, so they don't um, treat the cars as more important, which I think is quite good. The cars think they're the most important and the bikes think they're the most important, but at least the people on, the, on bikes are confident. Um, most people don't wear helmets here because they've usually got their own cycle lane and um, the bikes are respected enough that it's usually okay. Um, and I didn't say the train because despite what a lot of you might think, uh, the German train system is not as punctual as everybody says. I commute every day between Cologne and Bonn and um, it can be a nightmare. So <laughs> just to clear up that little myth. Uh, what is it? Uh, just checking some more. Yes, exactly. Cyclists everywhere. Thank you. Oh, great question from Jonathan. Has your choice of fashion changed since living in Germany? Definitely. It might have something to do with the fact that I started coming over here when I was quite a bit younger, so I was still a student. Um, so maybe I would have changed a bit anyway, but definitely noticed that it's it's very casual in Germany. So um, in the office especially, I was used to people generally dressing up a bit more. So of course it changes between the industries. So if you go to Frankfurt and you go into the um, business offices there, people will be wearing suits. But um, I went out of my house yesterday and saw a guy in a suit get out of a car. And I honestly think it was the first time in weeks I'd seen anybody in a suit. It was it just... It threw me a little bit. Um, and everybody in the office where I work, it's completely fine to turn up in jeans and trainers. I never used to wear trainers to work, so yeah, that was quite a big difference. And going out on the town is very casual. So I, I turned up in Germany with a suitcase of, you know, I had my high heels and my party dresses, and I had a very different look when I went out to, um, you know, my daytime attire. Whereas here, you know, you have a black t-shirt and jeans on in the day, and then you have a black t-shirt and jeans on at night time. So <laughs> I guess it makes things a bit easier. <laughs> mm. Ah, yeah. So Kyle's asking, is cash being used less because of the virus? So this was a point I actually made in my video that um, it was one of the very first things I noticed that was um, changing in Germany, where people were starting to ask for um, contactless card payments, which before was kind of a something that was being resisted. It was it was possible in some places, um, especially in supermarkets, but um, not really encouraged. And people were sort of suspicious of the credit card companies stealing your data. If you pay with cash, then you're not getting tracked so much. People can't see what you're buying, um, which I understand as well. But at the same time, I think in this area, I tend to go for convenience um, more than perhaps the security of it. Um, I like it in Cologne train station, so I'm there quite a lot because I commute on the train, as I said, every day. There's a little supermarket and they've just installed, or quite recently, um, some self-service checkouts, which is also quite new in Germany. It's not very widely spread. Um, and every time I'm there, I just think, oh, great, because I basically have my own private checkout because nobody uses them. <laughs> They're always free and I can go there and pay with my card and everybody else queues up to talk to the cashier and pay with their cash. So anyway, yes, that's changing a little bit now because of the virus. Um, I paid for my bread rolls. I bought four bread rolls yesterday in the supermarket at the little bakery stand, and I paid with my card, which was unheard of before. So I'm kind of hoping that some of these things will, will stay that way after, after this is all passed. Um, okay. Kula Alaf, thank you, yes, <laughs> greetings uh, from Cologne. Someone was asking about um, dialects as well. I do struggle with the dialects uh, from different places in Germany. I think my ear is quite tuned to people speaking in this sort of area, so Cologne, Dusseldorf. Um, that's not usually a problem for me, but as soon as it's, you know, the Swabians, the Bavarians, I do struggle quite a lot and I have to concentrate a lot harder to try and understand people. Uh, we're going to do a um, video definitely going into like regional specialities. Um, once all this is over, uh, when we're allowed to travel again, we'll, we'll be going around into some other places in Germany. So if you have any tips or places we, want to go, we should go to, then just, just let us know.
Haha, <laughs> Haley's asking if I like German beer. I think I would probably be thrown out of the country if I didn't like German beer, so I will answer yes. Um, I'm going to be faithful to my home city Cologne and say that I love Kölsch, which is the local type of beer. Um, but yeah, pretty much any German beer I'll take, I think it's all really good. I think what, something that's really interesting I noticed here is I found it strange that most places have just one beer on tap. In the UK you tend to have like seven different types of beer in one bar or in one pub. Um, starting to change a little bit because of the whole craft brewing scene that is you know, picking up a bit of pace here, but quite often you'll get a pub or a bar or a restaurant that's just got one beer on tap. Um, loyal to one brand. I know lots of people are going to be upset with my beer choice, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Alex is asking, do you edit your videos yourself? Yes, I do, um, and I really enjoy it. So I, I really like having the whole creative process of coming up with an idea, thinking it through, working out how what it's going to look like, discussing it then with other people, so um, we'll always have a producer um, and usually they'll be um, a native German so they they can sort of give the German perspective on it which is also really important because perhaps I'll have misunderstood something um, or you know I don't want to be uh, misrepresenting things so that's really good to have this exchange and then we develop the idea then we go and film it usually there's just uh, three of us so we have um, a couple of people that we film with really great camera team and a producer and then I go into the cutting room and I cut it myself. Uh, takes quite a lot of time sometimes, so I know the videos are really short, <laughs> but um, there's a lot of work that goes into it. It can take you know, more than a week sometimes to put a video together. Um, but I like that, I'm glad it's a little bit more, um, yeah, I didn't want to make a product that was just something quick that we get out there, I wanted to make it. I put a lot of my love into it, I put a lot of thought into it, so I hope you guys can see that. Um, thank you for all the lovely comments that are coming in as well. Um, I'm really, really glad that you guys enjoy the videos. I think, um, obviously, it's, it's always my perspective that's shown, but I hope that I can um, make it a bit broader, and I hope that you guys feel that you can join the conversation and tell us um, how you see it, if you've got experience in Germany, or just tell us how it compares to things in your country. It's really interesting to get that conversation going. Um, Ah, interesting question coming in from Willie D. What do you think about the far right rising in Germany? So obviously that's been a really big topic over the last few years. What with the far right political party coming into parliament again, it's been, um, yeah, a very serious topic. Um, and I think it's something that we need to explore. I'm actually going to be doing a video this year, um, um, sometime in the next few months when also this pandemic has passed. Um, where we look at World War II and how um, that's been dealt with in Germany um, and we kind of could, we could bring in the modern day aspect of that so um, what's kind of left over from, from the far right, from Nazism in the country uh, be really interested to explore that if you guys have got any thoughts on that do let us know we'd love to hear about that as well um, oh, I've got someone asking how I ended up at DW. We actually had that question loads of times uh, over the last couple of days. Um, I did mention it earlier in the stream, but just a quick uh, reminder. So I came to DW because I uh, applied for their international traineeship and luckily I got it, so I was very pleased. It meant that I could come over and train to do multimedia journalism. Um, it was a mixture of English and German, so it was a really good program. and. Yeah, it kind of meant I could get my foot in the door. I was already working as a journalist in the UK, but um, the transition to Germany would have been a lot more difficult, I think, um, without that opportunity. I think um, for most, to work at other outlets here, you know, you really should be fluent in German. As I've, as I've explained, I'm not completely fluent, so um, yeah, that could be a struggle. So, what other questions have we got? Ooh. Okay, Matthew's asking, I was wondering, did Brexit affect any of your relationships or friendships in Germany? Hmm, interesting. Um, no, I don't think it affected them. It's obviously something that I've talked a lot about over the last few years. Um, I think it's died down now, but a couple of years ago it was definitely the first question on everyone's lips if they found out that I was from the UK. Um, what do I think about Brexit? Did I vote for Brexit? Um, I can confirm I did not vote for Brexit. Um, and I actually came over to Germany exactly at that time, so it was 2016. Um, 
and I think the referendum just happened and I think about a month later I moved here. So it was a really interesting time. It was obviously, I was a bit uncertain at, the, at, at first if it would affect my being able to move over here. Um, luckily it hasn't. I mean, it's taken such a long time to sort everything out anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, even if it even if there had been any problems, I'd have had a long time to work them out. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sad that we, we left the EU, but um, I'm glad that I can enjoy the benefits of, of European life while I'm over here. I think somebody actually asked um, why it is that, that Germans more pro-European and why the UK is not so much. It's a really complicated topic. There are so many, so many alleys you could go down to explain it. Um, and I think that perhaps we'll see things changing in the next few years and the attitudes might actually switch around. We'll have to wait and see. So, someone's, oh, Peter's asking if I've ever been to the Czech Republic. That was actually something I was going to admit um, before. I haven't been to the Czech Republic, but when Hayley asked about the beer earlier, um, I probably should admit that I actually, my favorite beer is Czech beer, so. Ooh, Warrior 100 Girl, great name is saying, do you dream in English or German? Which is really interesting. It's one of those things that people often say that when they're learning a language, um, they notice that they've kind of turned a point when they start dreaming in the other language. I definitely know I've dreamt sometimes in German, but not often. I remember I used to dream a bit in French when I was learning that. So um, yeah, it comes up sometimes. I can't always remember exactly what's happened, but there's I don't know, you have the feeling that you know you were talking to someone in German in your dreams. Maybe I was sweating when I woke up and <laughs> I was a bit stressed. Something like that. Aha, Bigger Dawn says, please do a short wrap. I'm not sure if I'm going to expose you guys to that right now. Um, and we actually had the question. I know that's in here. Very... Here we go. It was from RM on YouTube. When are you making another rap video? I love your show, but that episode in particular was very funny and charming. So um, I'm really glad you guys liked it. I'm well aware that I am not a rapper. <laughs> um, but yeah, for those of you who haven't seen it, it was basically a rap about cultural integration, um, but told through the medium of, um, well, it was rap and showing fish and chips or curry verse and asking how German I'd become. I really enjoyed making that episode. I mean, it was great to go back to London and it was great to try something different in terms of wrapping an episode. Um, I also did one episode that was a poem. So that was a love, a love poem to asparagus because the Germans just love asparagus so much. Um, and that was one of my favorite episodes to film, I think, because it was so different. We also got to hang around on a, a, an asparagus farm, so that was cool. Um, but the problem with doing episodes like that is that you get what the Germans would call an ohrwurm, so an earworm, and the rap or the poem was just going around in my head for mm, probably a good two weeks afterwards, so that can be quite difficult. Thank you, Mana, Fish and Chips and Currywurst, exactly. <laughs> we don't have to choose, we can uh, get the best of both worlds. Okay, I'm going to go back to some other questions just because I know there's some really good ones that we had in... Someone asking, where did I get my sarcastic humour from? I think us Brits are kind of known for that. Um, I hope it always comes across in a friendly way. I like to highlight the things that are strange or quirky about Germany, but I never want to be disrespectful, so I hope, I hope that that comes across. Someone was asking, um, Ant Anant on YouTube was asking about, please tell us about German sitcoms and TV shows, either current or past. Do they have an equivalent of Friends or CSI, etc.? So I'm really glad you asked that. We're actually planning an episode right now, which is going to be about um, German TV, German films, and bringing in things like dubbing. Uh, I know a lot of you have asked before on YouTube about why do Germans still dub everything. <laughs> so um, that'll be a really interesting one to look into. I really hope that we're going to be able to film it in the next few weeks, uh, but obviously we have to wait and see what um, the case is. And if we do, we'll be doing it um, socially distanced, so don't worry about our health. Um, they don't think they have a, an equivalent of friends, sadly. Find <laughs> Um CSI is a good good question because uh, the Germans just they love crime dramas. They they love police dramas. Sometimes they'll be very bad low budget ones, but they'll also um, yeah they they have a good tradition of that. There's obviously Tatort, which is on once a week and has I think it's been on for 50 years now and it's got a huge tradition behind it. So um, yeah, crime TV shows are a favourite here. 
There was one more question I really wanted to do. Oh, in the meantime, I'll just say, do you cross the street while the light is red? Asks Maxta. Um, uh, officially, I should say no. <laughs> I definitely still do it sometimes in Germany, but I'm much more cautious about it. Um, so for those of you who don't know, it's uh, not allowed in Germany. So you really, you genuinely can get fined for it by the police. I've been fined twice since I've lived here. Um, I think it was five euros or something. Um, one time I was coming home from work when I was working in a pub. I had my bike and I walked over and the police car came. There was nobody on the street. I think it was two o'clock in the morning. Um, they came and they told me off. They then followed me home and I had to go and get my boyfriend to come downstairs and pay a five euro fine on his EC carter, which is a bit like a debit card, because they wanted a fine, but they didn't accept my credit card. I didn't have any cash. I'm not sure if they would have accepted that anyway. Uh, anyway, that was a very German experience, I thought. So yeah, now I think twice before I cross the road on red. <laughs> and Rahul's asking about, um, yeah, the cash-oriented German society and how digital have they become. I would say, um, please go and watch the digital video that we made, because we explained that in quite a lot of detail. It's it's kind of um, an uncertain question. So things are changing, but I think when you move here from other countries, often you feel like the pace of change here is very slow. So uh, honestly, I'm just generally surprised that there are so many fax machines in the country still. Um, yeah, just little things like that that make you quite surprised in a country where you'd think it would be, there'd be more uh, focus on, you know, they have got a reputation for engineering, they've got a reputation for innovation, they've got a reputation for pragmatism, and yet some things like that still seem quite far behind. <laughs> I'm not going to answer the question about my favourite German car manufacturer because I really don't like driving. <laughs> so um, part of that is obviously that I have to drive on the wrong side of the road while I'm here, but um, no, I'm, like I said, I like, I like my bike, so I'm, I'm more happy on the, on the bike. Someone's asking, so Daily Dose of YouTube is asking, is it true that everybody in Germany is highly interested in politics? Um, difficult to make the blanket assumption about everybody, but I think you, if you're here, you should be prepared to, to talk about political or current topics um, if you're in a, in a group of people. I think that Germans are quite curious. I think that most Germans do like to follow the news and keep up with what's going on. A lot of Germans are quite opinionated, so um, that comes into it too. But um, don't take their discussion for, I mean, they're not being rude, they're not trying to be um, intrusive most of the time, but they are quite a curious nation, I would say. So, yeah, definitely read up on that. There was one more question I really wanted to do, which was, I don't know if I'm going to, ah, here it is, yeah. This was my favourite question, I think, that came in uh, from Craig, also on YouTube, saying, imagine you and some Germans on a lonely island. What three things would you take with you? So I was thinking about this quite a lot. I couldn't quite settle, um, but we'll see what I come up with now. Um, I think my first one I would definitely take would be some kind of board game because, you know, we need to keep entertained and Germans just love board games and they often will play quite complicated ones, which is good for us because we're on this lonely island. We don't know how long we're there for. So I don't know, maybe Carcassonne or... Um, Risk is very popular here. I think that's actually not invented in Germany, but it's it's a very popular one and it takes a really long time, so that'd be good. Um, I don't know if this is bending the rules, but I'm going to say I'm going to take Wikipedia <laughs> because, like I mentioned about the small talk, you need to know your facts when you're talking to Germans and they're going to be asking me all sorts of questions if we're there for a long time. Uh, so I need to have the answers at, um, at my fingertips. Um, apart from that, what else should I take? I mean... We need some comfort food. Maybe I'll take my flips. Okay, I'm gonna take my crisps, which I mentioned earlier. Those are my three things. So thank you, Craig, for that. I really like that question. Ah, Stephen David is asking, has Hamsterkauf stopped now? So Hamsterkauf was um, a word I mentioned in the last video that I did um, about being in lockdown in Germany. Literally means hamster buy or hamster shop. Um, and it's the idea of just buying everything you can, a bit of panic buying. Uh, we've seen that different countries have been panic buying different products and in Germany it has been things like toilet paper, tinned tomatoes um, and yeast recently that's been flying off the shelves but no things seem to be slowly calming down so I went to the supermarket yesterday and for the first time in about three weeks the toilet roll shelf was very fully stocked so 
Calm down, everybody. It's fine. Oh, thank you, Frederick, for your iron brew comment. I love iron brew. Maybe that's something I miss a lot, actually. People were asking what I miss from the UK. Iron brew is a brilliant Scottish drink, which is bright orange. Um, and that's great. So that's a little cultural tip from me for, for UK or rather Scottish <laughs> products. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Dominic. There are far better games than Risk here. Feel free to uh, recommend some other games in the comments, then we can all keep occupied while we're still in lockdown. <laughs> we're very happy to have recommendations from you guys too. Any more questions coming in here? So Hudad is asking if I'm planning to move back to the UK anytime. Um, thank you for your thumbs up for our videos. No, I'm not planning to move back to the UK. I'm, I'm very happy in Germany. Um, I feel like I've kind of made it my home now. I feel like I have two homes perhaps, but I'm very comfortable here. Um, obviously I miss my family and friends a lot and I think I think it's important to talk about the fact that I mean I'll probably never reach that level of communication and understanding that I have back in the UK simply because it's made up of all sorts of things it's made up of popular culture and tradition and heritage and simply growing up with the same things around you so there are certain things in Germany that will just they'll go over my head when people are talking about it because I didn't grow up here and I just don't have the same cultural references all the time. But that's okay. Like I said before, I find it an adventure to live in a foreign country and I find the differences kind of exciting. <laughs> so yeah, no plans to move back to the UK. Um, Ajay is asking about, thank you, so he says, I love your videos, thank you very much. Um, and asking what the filming process is like. So um, I think in terms of getting the ideas, a few other people had asked about that as well. It's really comes from all over the place. So I have a, um, a notes on my phone and if I'm in the train or I'm talking with somebody in the pub or whatever and someone comes up with something or an idea pops into my head, I'll just make a little note of it there. Um, I think a lot of it comes out of discussions with other people. So sometimes with people who've also moved to Germany, but um, at other times it'll be... Uh, with Germans themselves and then the ideas kind of spring up. We've got a very long list of topics that we still want to cover so um, we're not running out of ideas uh, and yeah and then we we plan the video, we write a script um, and as I said we discuss it then with the producer, we go filming and then I cut it. So yeah if you have any more topic ideas do let us know, we're very happy to get suggestions. And I do want to tell you that we are also going to be launching on Instagram at some point soon. It's been delayed slightly because of what's going on right now, but um, we'll keep you updated on when that's coming. That means that um, we'll be able to do more content and more often. So a lot of you have been asking if we can do videos more often than every two weeks. Um, they're quite difficult to make faster, so that's probably not very likely. But if we get Instagram up and running soon, then yeah, you'll be getting your daily dose of Mute the Germans. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. I think we've got time for maybe a couple more questions. Peter's asking, that's a nice question, thank you. How is your accent in German so good? Uh, maybe you guys just see the best of it in the videos, I don't know, but I promise I have, um, I have my problems for sure. Uh, I remember in one earlier video, I think it was in the small talk video, where I was talking about how Germans love to air the room, they like to get their fresh air in, um, and I used the word Luften, I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly now. I can't quite hear the difference, but it's the U with the with the umlaut, with the two dots on top. And I find that difficult because it's just not a sound we have in English. So you can, if there's any Germans here, you can tell me if I'm saying it correctly. Luften, Luften, I'm not quite sure. But um, people picked me, up on, picked me up in the comments for that and said I was saying it wrong. Um, and it, it betrayed me for being a not, uh, German, uh, not a native speaker. So there we go. Oh, thank you. Apparently that was correct, so I'm glad. Um, oh, yes, and the question about Oktoberfest. I'm very sad about that. I was planning to go this year to bring you some content from there, but we're just going to have to delay that till next year. Um, yeah, obviously a lot of people are, are pretty sad about Oktoberfest being cancelled. It's going to be quite a big hit for the Bavarian economy, and I know a lot of people, people have written to me and said that they were planning trips over for it, so they're a bit disappointed. Um, but obviously, you know, health comes first, and there's always next year. I don't speak Scottish Celtic language, unfortunately. I'm very sorry. Um, can't help you there. But, interesting fact, there are some crossovers between certain Scottish words and German words. So, for example, I was very excited to learn that 
church in German is Kirche, and in Scottish you'd say Kirk. So yeah, that was one exciting crossover. There's a few little things like that. I like that about language that you can get these um, little surprises when you duck into them. Okay, um, probably going to have to wrap up there now. We've been on for an hour. Um, I have really enjoyed myself. As I said, I wish I could have seen some of your faces. It would have been a bit more fun if it was like a Zoom call and I could see everybody. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for joining me. Maybe we could do this again sometime. Uh, if you enjoyed it, let us know. If there's anything you'd like us to talk about next time, that'd be really cool. Um, and keep, keep commenting. We love hearing from you guys. We love getting your response to the videos. Um, we love getting suggestions for new topics. Um, as I said, we've got loads more in the pipeline, so you'll be getting, you'll be hearing a lot more from us, that's for sure. Um, and do check out on DW, we've got lots more Meet the Germans content, not just videos, we've got galleries, we've got articles. So if you go to dw.com slash meet the Germans, you can see all of that. And there's plenty of time while we're in lockdown to be reading through all of that. So yeah, um, stay safe, everybody. And thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Bye.